Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this series of the EICF. Thank you very much for attending us. Unfortunately and regrettably, what we see is that the figures for COVID-19 continue growing. Now we have this variant Omicron, which has created, uh, again, levels of uncertainty and restrictions. The figures from yesterday give us uh, an overall figure for Europe of 57 and a half million of cases with a rate of deaths of 9,000, So under these circumstances, uh, the ICF wants to express once again the solidarity with the companies, solidarity and condolences with the families that have gone through the disease uh, during this period. And also an advice, please follow the health instructions, the health recommendations, in order that we all can continue in our economical activity, which is fundamental for Europe, and at the same time uh, fighting this uh, pandemic. We've been doing, as you are aware, a series of webinars during these uh, last months. Uh, we are starting the last month of the year, which is December. And we have a, a set of four webinars scheduled for this month, which, uh, because of the circumstances, have been more or less compiled into the topic of today, which is about cell system. Okay? Today, we are going to discuss about how we, how we can improve it. But in further webinars, we will see what is behind a, a cell system in terms of the raw materials, also, we will go through an understanding of the critical of the autoclave technology in order that the cells that have to go through this process remain at sound modes. And also, the new approach eh, to building a mold that could be also a 3D printed uh, mold. So please uh, stay tuned, keep on attending those webinars because I think the month of December is bound to be very interesting, especially into what it respect to cell systems. Relative to the interventions for the questions and answers section in particular, you can you have the chatbot, which is located, as you know, at the right side of the screen, at the bottom right side of the screen. You can type your message and then hit enter. But do not forget that in the case that we are in the questions and answers section, you will have to click the question mark before you hit enter. We will activate the questions and answers when we arrive to that uh, section. Also, you can download the presentation of today uh, by uh, accessing the, 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 the tab called Share Files, and you, you can download it from there. For those who have missed any of the previous webinar series, you can still go in through our website, and you can have a review of those on demand. And finally, uh, a recommendation or an offering. Uh, think about joining the ACF if you're not a member, and also we would like or to invite you to attend our conference in Santander on the 15th to 18th of May 2022. Well, as I was saying, we are talking today about cell system. It's the first of the four presentations that we have for the month. Um, the, the, the question that is being put on the screen, which is the title of, uh, of the presentation of today, is very relevant and very practical uh, because the way to improve a cell system is to measure, to compare, and to adjust. And in order to do that, Mr. Sebastian Sulte, with an engineer from Ransom and Randall, with great experience, and in particular with great experience in this process of bend market, is going to lead us through this presentation. So I would like, Bastian, to hand over to you and lead us through this benchmarking process. Thank you, Carlos. Hello and good morning. So let's start. So um, yeah, if you want to improve your shell system, we say benchmark it. And uh, benchmarking is, um, I will walk you through the this whole process um, because this presentation will cover the importance of uh, benchmarking your shell system and uh, how to do so. Um, we will also cover advancements in uh, ceramic shell technology. And uh, finally, I will walk you through the RNR foundry 
consult consultation process and uh, we'll share several customer success, success stories with you. So, <coughs> our agenda for today is uh, yeah, benchmarking. Why benchmarking a share system and how this will happen. Um, I will further say something about the ceramic shell technology, uh, about shell properties. I will explain you our comprehensive solutions uh, process. And uh, finally, we'll uh, share some several customer success stories with you. So, yeah, benchmarking. Why benchmarking your shell system? This is uh, to evaluate uh, new technologies. Uh, to address the process issue you have, for example, you have uh, capacity constraints uh, where you can reduce shell codes uh, to improve this. Um, or you have issues with dry time, uh, in general, quality issues, for example, cracking, non fill, or all the other defects. Um, sometimes it's uh, needed to, to reduce uh, shell costs for your company and uh, yeah, to be able to have a business uh, continuity to, but by having a backup plan. And uh, yeah, we will uh, evaluate current shell technologies with you then. So how benchmarking will happen? We will start together with uh, defining the individual objectives or goals for a new system you have. Uh, we will further utilize uh, shell technology to maximize properties. And uh, we will evaluate your existing shell system in our Ransom and Randolph laboratory versus Ransom and Randolph alternatives. This means we will test your existing system and start working on better alternatives to reach your targets. So I will give you a short overview about the actual ceramic shell technology. So by using improved test methods, Binder materials have evolved considerably. So today's enhanced high-performance binder materials contain specific ingredients added to enhance the slurry application. This means in primary binders, polymers added to provide adhesion to the wax. They are formulated to have good wetting of the wax and uh, to eliminate air bubbles on the surface of the pattern in order to cover all the detail in the pattern. There are some specific uh, longer life binders, uh, some are pH neutral. This uh, always depends on your needs. So in backup binders, polymers are added to act as a film former. They help reduce moisture wicking of previous or subsequent coats under the shell so that they can enhance drying. Tough polymers are included to increase green strengths. So these backup binders can also prevent against elastic deformation. Polymer enhanced high performance binders are designed to eliminate many of the defects that are, that are associated with straight colloidal silica binders. All of them are working uh, with different refractories, uh, blends. Some uh, include fibers, some not. This is um, always specific for each customer's needs. So let's talk about shell properties. Shell properties uh, are defined in, in different ways. Um, let's start with uh, modulus of rupture, it's a uh, short MOR. So MOR is an intrinsic or inherent material property. However, due to the nature of the ceramic shelling process and the multitude of input variables, both process and product related, the shell system cannot be defined by a single number. As with any property in a foundry, realistic process limits and or specification limits should be established. The two most common measurements of, of shell strength are the modulus of rupture, MOR, and adjusted fracture load, AFL. So again, MOR is an intrinsic material property of a shell strength, which is measured by through a three-point bending test. It measures the maximum stress a sample can handle. AFL is performed by the same test, 
that takes sample sickness into account and is therefore a measurement of load bearing capacity. Test. A shell with the lower MOR can achieve the same degree of crack or fracture resistance, AFL, uh, but with more shell sickness. So, shell sickness is normally increased in two ways by using more total coats or by applying thicker individual coats. A shell material with a higher MOR would allow the foundries to cut coats and still maintain an adequate load bearing. Therefore, increasing MOR and or AFL of a shell is a generally accepted way to improve its resistance to cracking and fracture. But one of the first new tests developed to drive the advancements made in many of today's new shell systems was stress strain analysis. Previously, casters could only look at how a shell broke and what the maximum stress of that shell was when it broke, MOR. When we started to look at the max stress or the MOR using a stress strain analysis, we were able to analyze the impact of the flexibility of the shell system. As you can see in the graph, when looking at these two systems, they have the same maximum stress. But the sample on the right, the yellow line, can actually absorb a lot more stress because it's expressed over more flexibility. Another test, to, test developed to drive industry advancement was the edge strength test. This test was developed specifically to look at the strength of the shell by determining what the strength is at the shell's weakest point on a knife or trailing edge. This test is run by splitting the shell and uh, measuring that edge of the shell. Edge strength is in indicative of uh, overall shell strength, as edges typically contain the majority of cracks. Therefore, if the edge is strong, it's a good indication of a strong, strong overall shell. Further shell properties. So, permeability, always important. And testing a shell's permeability helps to understand how gas passes through the shell wall. It is important to note that while permeability can be tested cold or at room temperature, at Ransom and Randolph, we prefer to test hot permeability because this method best simulates what happens during the actual de-wax process. Another standard way to test the shell's permeability is to utilize the ping pong ball method. This involves taking a ceramic tube and gluing a ping pong ball on the end of it. You then build a shell around it and force air through, through it to measure how that air is forced through the permeability setup. This brings us to uh, the gas flux. So the gas flux accounts for shell thickness and is a more realistic measure of permeability because a thicker shell is uh, more resistant to gas flow and therefore has a lower gas flux. So these tests take sickness into account because, as I told you, thicker shell have, uh, has more resistance to gas flow. In the picture, you can see that shell 1 and shell 2 have equal permeability, but shell 1 is thicker. So the gas flux of shell, shell 2 is therefore higher. And now we come to the green permeability. This test was designed for shell property testing, measures the ability of a shell to allow compressed air to flow through it, which can be correlated to the ability of wax to penetrate the shell during shell de-wax. So a shell with a higher green permeability will have greater ability to absorb wax and elevate some of the stress of the de-wax process leading to a reduction in shell cracking. Oh, yeah, shell cracking. <laughs> Here we are at the scrap test. This is a shell's capacity to resist autoclave pressure. The scrap test developed by the Ransom Randolph team measures the shell capacity re to resist autoclave pressure. This test was designed to measure shell's ability to not crack. So. We take several wax fairs and inject them with a traditional aluminium dye. 
we set up a tree with wax fairs and uh, no wax gates <laughs> to ensure that the wax cannot drain out of uh, the fair. We then shell the tree normally and uh, de-wax the fairs. Once the fairs are de-waxed, they are quantified as either pass or fail. This test is an excellent predictor of determining whether or not certain shell will crack due to the fact that uh, we perform the test under the most extreme shell conditions and circumstances and provide a model for testing the impact of changes to wax or even shell process. Another important test is uh, the spawning load measurement. So the spawning load test, which was also developed by Ransom and Randolph, measures the intercoat adhesion um, between ceramic shell layers. The ability to measure adhesion can be used to optimize slurry and shell building parameters in solving spawning. So the data shows that increasing the spalling test load has a positive impact in reducing spalling. How is this performed? So the test process is as follows. The samples are prepared, approximately one, to one by two inch. A T button is attached uh, to sample with, with uh, adhesive. The T button is uh, connected to force gauge. The table is uh, also the sample is leveled. Then the force is applied to the sample. The maximum force is recorded and therefore the spalling load is measured. <coughs> so this short video will walk you through the spall test process. Show you again. So, as, as you can see, a high strength, no stretch finishing line is attached to the force gorge. The prepared samples with T button already attached is then connected to the force gorge. The table and sample are leveled and force is applied to the sample. The maximum force is recorded and the spalling load is measured. So now I will, I will explain you the Ransom and Randolph comprehensive solution process in depth. So comprehensive solutions process, uh, this is to use shell property testing to compare um, for your current system and potential new system to uh, utilize ceramic shell technology to, in, to enhance shell properties and uh, yeah to find customized solutions to fit your needs. Um, this is a process we are doing um, each individual for every customer because every customer has uh, different needs. And uh, we will start always with uh, evaluation and analysis. This means our team works closely with you to complete the pre-assessment process evaluation and situational analysis of your process concerns prior to making any material implementations or process change recommendations. This allows us to clearly understand your problems, to define goals and establish priorities to meet performance objectives for measuring success. After we're doing the fact gathering. This means we work with your team gathering facts to baseline current material properties and manufacturing pro practices to better understand the equipment formulations, process steps used in your existing system. We take the time to, to determine what is happening as expected versus deviations from those standard expectations. This phase includes Ransom and Randolph laboratory testing to nar narrow down suspect process variables, assess material options and identify the best solution for your foundry. Then we make a proposal. 
So our team evaluates the information gathered to tailor a proposal specifically to your facility, including a statement of problems, a list of goals, and a clear action plan for the team to evaluate and implement. Depending on problems identified, trials may be conducted in a Ransman Randolph laboratory or on site in your facility. Once the proposal is reviewed and accepted, the action plan is finalized and we work hand in hand with you to establish the action plan's implementation timeline. After the validation starts, so with mutual agreement on the solution proposal, we work, we, we work on site at your facility, building slurries or investments, dipping shells or casting flasks reviewing casting results and adapting process variables. The validation process is designed to make a quick impact at your facility for problem resolution, while minimizing overall disruption to your daily operations. Next step is the reporting. So upon trial compl completion, our team will complete a throughout evaluation report that reviews the original objectives, an overview of the action plan, a summary of test results, the data interpretation, and suggested next steps. So where data in indicates that performance or proce process improvements are possible, next steps might include robot scale-up, production implementation, or on-site execution of Ransom Randolph, Randolph laboratory work. If data is inconclusive, next steps might suggest an amended action plan. And finally, the feedback. We compile your feedback on the tested solution and process to confirm success and determine how well the solution meets your needs. Implementation after positive test evaluations, implementing the solution in a timely manner, allows you to quickly reap the benefits of success. We diligently work with you to develop and implement a conversation plan while offering extensive resources and valuable support along the whole way. So now I will show you some uh, case studies uh, we've made uh, at different customers to, to show how, how the, the process worked and uh, yeah, giving benefits to the customers. So of our first case study uh, was a customer from uh, aerospace. So and, uh, they're using a polymer enhanced backup binder. The objective the customer had was uh, reduce cracking and uh, being able to remove a shell coat. Technology we've evaluated were polymer and fiber concentrates. The benchmark properties were defined by the shell strengths, a scrap test, and checking the permeability. So we have benchmarked against two enhanced shell systems, generally known as polymer fiber one and polymer fiber two. Here you can see the shelling sequence used. And as you can see directly, both of the enhanced shell systems allowed us to cut two backup codes from the standard process. So we went from eight codes and a seal to six codes and a seal. Yeah, testing conducted was for sure the, the shell strengths, MRR and AFL. Um, this was measured in green and hot and in post-fired states. The permeability was uh, also measured and finally, we uh, utilized the scrap test. Um, I've normalized the data to the current shell system. Uh, this allows you uh, an easy comparison between the systems. As you can see, even at, less, at two less codes, the enhanced shell systems were still 5 to 10% thicker and had significantly higher green strengths and permeability. So the enhanced shell system also had much higher green deflection and a lower post-fired MOR due to the polymer content of the binders used. This allows you an easier knockout and additional benefit. 
So I'll now come to the scrap results. As you can see, the current system we have set on 100. And uh, yeah, as you can see directly, the Polymer and Fiber 2 system offered the best overall solution to, to meet the objectives. The code reduction, remember, we have uh, reduced them by two and uh, increased crack resistance. So customer made the decision and uh, changed to the Polymer and Fiber 2 system and uh, eliminated the cracking issue while being, being able to remove one to two shell codes reliably. So we have eliminated shell related defects and uh, yeah, also reduce the production time, led to faster turnaround time for the cut for the customer. Coming to case study two, this was uh, presented as an ICI paper back in 2015. Customer was uh, RLM Industries, and the issues they had were uh, spalling of the primary codes. So. Which test uh, have we performed? For sure, spore load testing. So we benchmark current shell construction techniques versus alternatives. Um, yeah, by adding intermediate codes, uh, working with high binder solids, uh, with additional prime stuckles, with the SIN prime, uh, with the SIN backup. Yeah, just to to find out which which will be the best solution for this customer. On this slide, you can see the normal normal shell build, uh, which is test A. So this was uh, in general one prime with a zircon. After a pre-wet, then a prime with a 50 by 100 fused silica backup. Um, yeah, from code four to seal, uh, each samples are same. So we started with uh, test B, which was uh, one prime plus zircon. And after a non-fiber backup as an intermediate. Test C was uh, one, one prime with zircon, and after a pre-wet, the prime was uh, 50 by 100 stucco, but both with uh, high binder solids. Test D was also one prime and zircon, and after a pre-wet, prime and zircon, and after that, a pre-wet with prime and uh, stucco 50 by 100. Test E was uh, one prime with zircon and after a sin prime with uh, 50 by 100 stucco. And finally, test F, uh, which was uh, one prime with zircon and uh, directly after uh, uh, one coat with uh, sin viscosity, non fiber intermediate uh, with same stucco 50 by 100. So here you can see the spore results. Um, at the bottom, it's uh, in relative scale, and you can see directly that system E with uh, one prime and zircon, and after the sin prime uh, with the 50 by 100 uh, stucco, will give, the, will give the best results at spalling tests. So um, the summary is, we were able to uh, increase uh, the spore load uh, with system E by 51%. So the customer implemented the SIN second prime, as mentioned in, uh, in test E, and was able to eliminate uh, the spalling defects they had. Now we will come to the last case study. Um, Topic was the implementation of a high temperature speciality binder in an aerospace application. The main objective from a customer was uh, that they wanted to have a one slurry system for, for both. Uh, they're doing an equiax and uh, also single crystal applications. Further, they want to increase green strengths, the hot strengths, and also the permeability. Finally, they want to want to be able to reduce codes if possible. In detail, the Equiex objectives were improve for long-term slurry stability and to reduce scrap caused by inclusions. The single crystal objectives were to eliminate cracking 
especially after firing, and to stabilize dimensions. So we check different things. First, we check the, the impact on permeability by using uh, different flowers in the prime slurry. So we checked uh, a 325 mesh versus a 200 mesh flower in the prime. Um, further, we compared uh, our EHT binder to the current binder to check the impact of uh, high temperature binder on shell performance and to address objectives of increasing green and hot strengths. And finally, we're evaluating current stuccos versus alternatives to check how stucco chemistry can impact shell performance in general. So samples uh, which were built for the following test um, we tested. Uh, we have tested the green MOR. We have uh, further tested hot MOR with uh, at two different temperatures at 1200 degrees C, and also at uh, 1350 degrees C. And finally, we uh, measured the hot permeability at 1000 degrees C. Here you can see the results uh, again normalized. Um, but first, I want to say that uh, we could prove uh, that during the lab phase and the initial foundry trials, the EHT system was capable to triple the slurry life, which saving huge cost on slurry disposal and uh, rebuild for the customer. Um, now come back to the results here. Um, the hot stress was considered sufficient to resolve the bul bulging issues um, but green strength issues were encountered and we decided to go to combine the EHT binder uh, with our proven MXCXL concentrate and uh, also with our MXCXL X2 concentrate, which is a half fiber system. This product contains a modern polymer package and uh, other surfactants. While this showed uh, a significant improvement in green strengths, the presence of uh, polymer did, did reduce the hot MOR when compared to the EHT. For, as it had burned away, that's the reason. Tough, this was um, not considered as an issue, for as the increased shell build res resulted in equal AFL strengths. So what we can conclude from this research is that EHT is cap capable to fit within RMR's comprehensive solution program. Its performance can be altered to resolve specific issues in any foundry. So, yeah, we've uh, further checked uh, the material chemistry of um, different uh, stuccos and flowers. So we compared uh, the customer use product uh, versus uh, a typical typical use product uh, by Ransom and Randolph. So here you can see the differences. Its uh, biggest uh, differences are at the uh, SiO2, uh, for sure, uh, Fe2O3, and uh, Na2O. So we built MOR bars uh, with the EHT binder with uh, our MXC Excel concentrate, once with customer stucco and uh, once with uh, Ransom and Randolph, typically used stucco. And again, normalized results. So here you can see uh, we were able to reach uh, a higher MOR and also an AFL by having a, low, a lower deflection um, by using an R Ransom and Randolph stucco. So the initial results indicate uh, that the chemistry of uh, stucco does have an impact uh, to hot strengths. Yeah, but in the final end, um, yeah, we made the proposal to the customer for uh, validate um, our results. Um, by trials in uh, in the facility, but uh, as you all know, something happened, and um, yeah, therefore the project uh, was delayed um, due to COVID pandemic. 
what can we do? We have to wait and start improvements after. So, and here we are at the end. I would say thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, we will wake up, welcome any questions uh, that you might have. Thank you very much. Uh, the question and answer mode has been activated. And uh, as I say, when you make your, your questions, please don't forget before you hit enter to click on the question mark symbol okay? at the bottom of the screen when you type your messages. There is a, a question mark symbol that you need to click. Well, uh, it's a very interesting process, the one that you have uh, uh, presented, Bastian. Because I guess that in any foundry, one of the elements that we are always looking at is about the cell system. No? Yeah. And uh, also the requirements that we might put uh, into this cell system may change from time to time as the foundry evolves on the different products that the foundry is incorporated. No? Yeah. Uh, so this is really, really a very interesting approach. Having said that, is that something that is open for any customer or any, let's suppose a family that is, has not been a customer of Ransom and Randall can address this to you, can, uh, can try to, to get in touch with you and uh, go through this benchmarking process? Uh, yes, yes, for sure. Yes, for sure. That's uh, one of the reasons we have uh, implemented uh, this benchmarking process at uh, Ransom and Randolph. Because, uh, yeah, as all of us know, each customer has uh, has individual needs, issues, problems, uh, getting new products, uh, have to make developments, have to save costs. And uh, yeah, we are open for every customer and uh, they can contact us and uh, we will get in touch with them. And uh, yeah, start our benchmarking process uh, to support them and to generate uh, benefits for them. Is that a costly process for the customer? Is something expensive for the customer? No. In, uh, in general, it's a free of charge uh, service from Renzo and Randolph. Uh, for sure, during some trial phases, uh, there will rise up some, some costs internally for uh, having capacities to, to, to trial some, some products, some uh, implementations uh, for sure. But uh, uh, the process itself, uh, the support we we will give to the customer is uh, free of charge. Oh, this is really this is really interesting for foundries, no? If they are looking at uh, the cell system with some uh, issues that they want they want to to address. Yeah, and uh, that's also a reason we are doing um, yeah a lot of research and uh, work before in uh, our Ransom and Randolph laboratory. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just to save uh, save money for the customers. Okay, so that's very we are not we are not uh, just uh, selling you a product. We're always trying to to sell you or to give you a solution and to give you improvements. In your approach to foundries, when you are going through this uh, benchmarking process or you are uh, supporting the, the, the foundries, uh, what is the sort of knowledge? on the cell systems that you find in the foundries. I mean, we are talking in general. I, I guess there will be some foundries that they will have a lot of expertise. But what should be the average? Uh, do we know sufficiently in the industry about the technicalities of the cell system? Um, yeah, let's say in, in industry, uh, a lot of customers are very familiar with, uh, with the process and what happens. Um, yeah, but but for sure there there are always some some new things or some really specific things where it cannot be uh, or have always uh, been able to have uh, the complete knowledge. And uh, yeah, we have also some some smaller customers who just start with uh, shelling process. And uh, yeah, there we go. And um, yeah, let's say. We, we will set them up, we will uh, give them uh, knowledge about uh, the process, what happens, uh, what you have to do when, 
uh, some some problems rise up with uh, technical recommendations. Uh, I, it depends a bit on, uh, on 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 the level. If, if it is a really small company or or it is uh, if it is a big one, so using uh, ceramic shells since since uh, decades. True, it, it, it's clear. Yes, absolutely. One topic that you have not mentioned in this uh, benchmarking process is the effect on dimensions. Because, I mean, the, the, when you are looking to change the cell system, you're looking to get rid of the cracking, or you are good, uh, looking to make it compatible, as you have explained, if you are a single crystal. There are certain drivers, might be environmentally driven, there are certain drivers that you are looking for uh, to change the cell system. However, you have a collection of parts, you have a, por a portfolio of parts, you have the tooling, you have your shrinkage calculations. How, how this is uh, look at when a change on the cell system is there? Um, yeah, this this is uh, often tested um, by uh, yeah casting some samples <laughs> because you need uh, sample parts and uh, yeah it often depends on uh, on the stuccos uh, you are using or you want to use. Uh, this is uh, also often different from customer to customer. Some want to stay at their uh, used stuccos. Um, at, at some, we are able to, to implement um, other solutions, other materials to, to generate some benefits. Um, yeah, but finally, you have to check uh, dimensions. If, if, you, if you are changing, uh, yeah, for example, the stucco completely or so, and uh, we, we can do this. Um, on small parts uh, in in our facility, mm -hmm. um, yeah. But often it's uh, um, it's tested by the customers. So. We have some question here. We have a question from Roche Gadari from uh, Josh Fischer, so Casting Solution. Let's put this here. We have the measurement permeability in high temperatures. Do you think the results, considering the standard, the standard deviations, are useful to say a cell is good or bad? Um, yeah, if, if I understand this this question right, uh, yeah, we are, we are checking permeability uh, at high temperatures, and uh, yeah, it uh, always gives you an, uh, gives us some good overview. So I, I think the, the approach of the question is from a statistical point of view. Do you repeat all these tests in order to have a, a statistical uh, uh, result or analysis of the data that are being measured? Uh, yes. Yes. And, and, and yes, I would say uh, these tests are, are useful to, to say if a shell is good or bad. Okay. So we, have, we have a lot of data uh, in the back as well to be able to compare to. OK, so if we do not have any more questions from the from the audience, uh, I would like to, to express my gratitude to Bastian for this excellent presentation. Uh, I think it is important not only to have the ability in the cell systems to apply a good and sound statistical control in the daily operations, but to analyze the competitive position of your cell system versus your target. Because uh, another aspect that you have mentioned, and it, it was really interesting, it was a slurry life. Huh? So you are, you are, uh, you are looking to, to solve some problems. And you, not, you are not only solving the problems, but you are getting a, an additional advantage by having a, a higher slurry life. So I think this exercise of benchmarking the cell system is a must for any foundry that want to remain competitive, both from the technical side and from the cost uh, point of view. Yeah. So once again, Bastian, thank you very much for this presentation. Also, thank you to Ransom and Randall for the, this courtesy. And the floor is yours to, to say the last word to the audience. Yeah, it uh, was a pleasure for uh, Ransom and Randall to, to give you this presentation. Um, if you are interested in uh, improving your shell system, uh, yeah, please go to the Resident Randolph website uh, or contact me directly. So, uh, yeah, that we can get in touch and uh, solve your issues. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.